Hi everyone! Today we will talk about my favorite machine learning algorithm, the neural network. Neural networks were designed to mimic the process of human thought. We use them to solve problems that traditional computer programs find extremely difficult or almost impossible to solve. For example, face recognition, object detection, and image classification. In all three cases, humans are really good at it. We don't really need to think much to know that this is Maria and this is not Maria. We can also clearly see that there's a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor on this desk. And we can also say with confidence that this is a photo of a goat. But if we are so good at it, how come computers are not? Aren't they supposed to be smart or something? When a computer sees an image, it actually sees a collection of pixels where each pixel stores a numeric value representing the color intensity. We already talked about it in previous lessons and you guys can definitely check it out if you haven't. So then instead of a goat photo, our computer sees a very long array of numeric values. And then the tricky part is, even if we take another photo of the exact same goat on the exact same background, we will most likely get a brand new array of numeric values. And guess what? Even if we use the original photo, but slightly boost the brightness or maybe crop five pixels from the width or even just rotate it five degrees clockwise, we still get a brand new array of numeric values that has nothing to do with the original one. So if it is so difficult, how can we ever classify an image and left alone recognize a face in it? We simply expose our neural network to an enormous amount of images. Each image is an example, and the more examples we provide, the bigger the chance that our neural network recognizes the subject. In our case, that would be the class or category of GOAT. But that's not all. Our examples also need to be interpreted properly. That's why very often each example will have something called a label or a target that tells our neural network to which category it belongs. We call this process supervised learning, and if you guys want to find out more about it, you can check out my previous tutorial. But between the point where we feed an image to our neural network and the point where we reach the conclusion that it's a goat, a lot of different processes are happening in the background. These are series of statistical calculations that investigate each of our examples from many different angles. These calculations happen inside something called hidden layers. They are located in between our input layer and our output layer, and they are responsible for evaluating different aspects of our examples. For example, one hidden layer is responsible for edge detection, another hidden layer maps the colors, another one counts the legs, or maybe even detects horns. Now, on their own, these layers are quite useless. Just because something has horns, doesn't really make it a goat. But when we combine all these layers together, we actually have enough information to make a prediction. So an image is loaded into the input layer along with its label. This is where we begin training our neural network. The image will then pass through each of our hidden layers one at a time. And once we reach the output layer, our network will return a class name which we call a prediction. This class name, however, will not always match the label. And the main reason are those links that connect between the nodes of our layers. We call these links weights, and they help us determine how much impact each node has on the input. For example, maybe counting legs or detecting horns is much more meaningful than mapping colors. In that case, the weights that lead to the color layer will have lower values than the other two. So just because our first prediction is incorrect, it doesn't mean that our neural network is bad. It only means that we need to keep adjusting the weights until most of our examples are correctly classified or predicted. We call this process optimization. 
It can take a very long time, and we would usually optimize other parameters as well, not just the weights, but we'll talk about it in future lessons. But the good news are, once we are done optimizing, we can save the neural network and we can load it whenever we'd like. Then we can expose it to GOAT images it has never seen before, and in most cases, they'll be correctly classified. Now, because our neural network has already learned about thousands of GOAT images from different colors, different angles, and different ages, when it comes to GOATs, it's an expert. But when it comes to dolphins and giraffes, it is absolutely clueless. That's what we call narrow AI. It can only do a one particular task, and it has a very narrow area of expertise. It is up to us developers to keep teaching it further and making it much, much smarter. Cool! So in this video, we mostly focused on images as input. However, we can also classify text, we can classify audio, video, and pretty much anything else that can be represented with numbers. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please share it with the world. And you can also leave me a like, you can leave me a comment, you can subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, of course. And I will see you guys very soon in a brand new machine learning code along.